And then I met my first movie star. His name was Reverend. His friends called him Revs. I knew the first thing I needed from my movie was a movie star. I needed a James Dean actor. He'd been in a hit teen movie and was holed up in his crappy Hollywood crash pad with a picture of Muhammad Ali tacked to his wall, losing his mind. It's gonna be a golden Rams day. <laughs> At the time, there was a format called high 8 millimeter video. I'm sure some people remember that. And uh, they made a beautiful small camera, which I had. It was a Sony. And I would just hold the camera at the end of my arm because I played a character in the film. And so I would, I would sh shoot myself. I was playing a neurotic New York film director, which wasn't too much of a stretch for me. The next morning I had a little grocery shopping to do, and Revs told me what happened. He said he took her home for a little scene study. And then I'm fingering her, and I'm fingering her, and then I'm like licking her, uh, her belly button, and then I'm gracefully like, you know, like, uh, stop. He's like, why'd you stop? And I said, you know what, you know, I just, I respect you too much to do this. Ooh. And then what happened? <laughs> She called me a fucking liar and left. For some reason, the movie fell into like a, a time warp. It just fell into a black hole. I got really busy directing studio pictures and network television and cable television and making other films. And um, 16 years went by. I knew there was something going on there. And um, I saw some of the dailies. And uh, there was just all these magical moments. I, we just They weren't what we had planned. The plans for this movie just, just were never, it was just what he had planned and what happened were so far apart. She delivered booze door to door for a Hollywood liquor store in her 1971 Chevy Malibu, and she wanted to be a movie star. Everybody from New York comes out here to do films. So I already am here and I know here and I don't know, I don't know New York, I've never been there and I think I, I want to go there, but if I go there and I hate it, what am I going to do? We had done a little bit of work on it right after it had happened, but then we didn't really get to work on it until we decided that we'd finish this film and, and submit it to festivals this year, so it was only really this year. What? How did you feel about that, ordering? Hey, how am I supposed to feel about ordering? What do you mean? I'm just asking a question, you know? How do you feel about ordering? I can tell oh, there's something going on. Uh, I felt I was going through all these things, you know? At first, I was really nervous. Nervous. Good. This is good. And But then I said, you know, I can be specific in what I want. So I just tried to break it down in my head, you know? What do I really need? And were you trying to please the waitress, or were you trying to please yourself? I'm a pretty selfish guy. I was really thinking of me. We're here on Staten Island, one of my favorite boroughs in New York City. I've shot several films out here. Two. My first feature was shot on Staten Island, Spare Me, the bowling thriller. We shot on Staten Island. But I, I, think, I think in those days, it just wasn't possible to do a lot of this stuff. Now, things have changed. Many more people have small cameras and editing systems, and they can make their films. So things have changed. We didn't really have the internet when we shot the film. I'd always wanted to be a Hollywood movie director. I figured I'd swing by, make a hit film, and be on my way. All I had was a camera and a dream. I think my little Hollywood could please a lot of viewers all over the world. And I'm, I'm hoping somebody else sees that. We have really beautiful performances from Sean Andrews, Tipperin Mandalay, Jason Oliver, Brooke Langton. Beautiful performances from popular actors and actresses. I'm hoping somebody sees that and wants to get it out there to the world. Everything with this movie has felt like a gift because it was the film that we shot that seemed to crash and burn when we made it because it did not go according to plan. But so far we premiered in Sydney, Australia and now our North American premiere in New York City with new filmmakers. So we're really happy. I mean, these are two amazing events. So it really has been the saving grace of this movie. 16 years goes by, magic happens at the other end. So we're very happy. It was inspiring to me at the time because uh, Matt was out there just making movies. You know, he wasn't waiting for, uh, uh, you know, for somebody to come give us a job. He was just out there filming. And when everything was falling apart, he just made it work. 
and I hope that it can get out to as many festivals as possible so that other filmmakers are inspired to do the same thing. And then it hit me. What a fool I'd been. This was our movie. Right here, the four of us. I have a feeling Eric would like that film. <laughs>